If you're anything like me, you are craving a new 3D platformer collectathon, and Trip's Voyage by Uvalance and Actual Jimmy Jam is just that. This game is kind of like taking all of the 3D Mario games and combining them with just a dash of Banjo Kazooie. It has the charming characters of a rare game such as Banjo Kazooie and the controls and gameplay of 3D Mario games. I'll be showing you everything about this game with a side-by-side -side comparison of the games which this takes inspiration from. So let's -a go. And right off the bat, the rare charm is shining through already with this banter and layout with this robot in charge of teaching you the controls. Kind of reminds me of Bottles explaining the controls from Banjo-Kazooie with the character talking inside of the text bubbles on the left. You can call me Dave. I will now initiate my hand holding protocol. Well, thank you, Dave. Initiating. <laughs> Press X to jump and if you do three jumps in a row, you'll get extra height. However, the third and the highest jump only works if you maintain a fast enough speed through all three jumps. Test it out for yourself, get a feel for it. Dave is very impressed by your skill. Now on to the next move, free being. While in the air, press square to perform a dive. The physics of a dive confound my analytical system. How did you do it? Initiate robot sigh. I'm merely a text module, therefore I could not accomplish such a feat anyway. Be careful, however, you can't turn while performing a dive and you will bump into walls. Very soon you will be a master of acrobat furry being. Jump against the wall and slide down it when you're sliding press X to form a wall jump. You can jump back and forth between walls to reach high altitudes. Wall jumping can be a strenuous leg activity. Please exercise caution. If you jump near a ledge you'll automatically climb up it. Perfect for when your jumping is not quite sufficient. One last word, free being, press R1 or R2 to ground pound and circle to throw a boomerang. The abilities will offer you no help in your current environment, but they are merely previews of what is to come. You have finished your training. Although I am all but code, I believe this feeling I am experiencing is pride for you. Well, thank you, Dave. Go and have fun, free being. I will. I will definitely have some fun. And right away, we have some similarities with Trip himself and Mario, such as this red hat and the white gloves. But you know, other than that, this is an amazing original character. And it may not be based off of Mario because Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny also have white gloves. So just a little bit of speculation there, but given that there is some other movesets that are close to Mario, maybe there was some inspiration done there. And speaking of Mario games, right up there at the top right in the top left, that life counter and this bell counter with the golden anchor kind of reminds me of Mario Odyssey. Something to notice about when you jump in the air, as you can see, Trip's fist also is punching upwards. Kind of like how Mario jumps. Now, as Dave mentioned, we do have a triple jump, which feels exactly how it should, like in a Mario game. That is a very standardized moveset in all of 3D Mario games. There's also this boomerang. While it may not be exactly like what's in Mario Odyssey, but it vaguely reminds me of Cappy or maybe even the boomerang power up in Super Mario 3D World Bowser's Fury. While 3D Mario games were not the first to add wall jumping, they definitely popularized this game mechanic. And I must say the wall jumping in Trip's Voyage is really nice probably some of the best wall jumping I have actually felt besides inside of a 3D Mario game. Jump and dive is also another common moveset in 3D Mario games. Trip's Voyage has definitely got a great snappy feeling jump and dive. It's very responsive. It works just like how you want it. Believe me, I have used it countless times to correct jumps that I've done. Ground pounding is also another traditional 3D Mario move found in all 3D Mario games. I absolutely love this small amount of detail. I just think that looks really cool and it was a nice touch to be added. As we're exploring in a 3D game, it's inevitable that some walls and objects are going to get in front of your camera view. Oh, good work 
workaround is having some sort of a representation of where your character is when you're behind a wall. In this case for Trip's voyage, it is using a question mark, which is most likely inspired by Super Mario Sunshine. Now, maybe you need some help getting over a certain obstacle or you didn't make quite a jump. There is a safety net here to save you, which is the ledge hop. And this ledge hop reminds me a lot of Super Mario Odysseys, with Trip's legs swinging from left to right same as Mario. Wonder what happens when you take fall damage from really high up? Do you lose life? Let's find out. Now that shake animation reminds me a lot of when Mario falls from really high heights in Super Mario Odyssey. This testing ground is so fun that I collected all 100 of the bells in this level. Now it's time to move on to the game itself. And here it is. We've got Trip sitting back, relaxing, listening to some tunes. Let's go ahead and press X to jump. And right away, check this out. Trip has got a brand new design. He no longer has a red hat. It's white with a red accent, which makes him look less like Mario. He also has a new eye color. They're no longer just purple, and they've got a hint of blue to them as well. Most importantly now, he has a tail with a new tailspin attack. Over here, we need more bells. That is one of the things that you collect. There are two things that you collect in this game, and that is bells and golden anchors. That is just like two of the most famous collect-a-thon games, Mario collecting coins, Banjo-Kazooie collecting music notes, and he has a very fun animation, just like Mario when he collects stars, shines, moons, and how Banjo-Kazooie collects jiggies. The animation in running is a lot like Mario Odyssey, with Trip's arms kind of extending out to his sides when he's running down the hill faster. Something else that's also very similar is when you roll around just like this, kind of like the new way that Mario gets around nowadays in Mario Odyssey. It's very clear where a lot of this inspiration is coming from. Look at Trip over here. He's spray painting himself on the walls with a star and thought of the day, fish. I don't blame ya, he's hungry. He's a hungry little lad. This new character model is quite adorable. It's a great original character, really. Let's talk about this tail whip spin attack. This reminds me vaguely of Mario Galaxy's attack and how he spins around. I don't 100% feel like that is exactly the same, but it also is nice that you get a little bit of a boost and jump as well with that spin attack. Kind of like how you do in Mario Galaxy, and that is a lot more of a similarity than how it actually looks. Because this is a tail whip, it's not using his fists. Another similarity that I have to point out to you is when Trip does a triple jump, as you can see there in the landing. That reminds me a lot of how Mario from Super Mario 3D World, specifically Bowser's Fury, because I don't consider 3D World as a 3D platformer, but I do consider Bowser's Fury as one. It looks very similar to when Mario is landing in, in the cat suit. I think there's some similarities to be found with Super Mario 3D World as well. We got some crystals in the way, nothing that a tail swipe can't clear. Here is our first look at some of the enemies, and they look a lot like Goombas. Even with that exclamation mark, so let's go ahead and stomp on them. We can also tail swipe them. Two times for that, so I think that it's better to just stomp on their head. Right here is what the extra lives look like. I like this design. They kind of look like apples that are shapes and hearts. Pretty self-explanatory. You get an extra life. You only get three lives. And here's a little bit of the wall jumping in action. Another thing to note is when you break the chests, also there is stars. The consistency is very nice to see. And I do just love that addition. 
We also have these checkpoints that are lighthouses and I really just love the consistency that's carrying out this sailor vibe throughout the entire game. Very nice. Gonna have to do an air dive right there. Very nice. And our second enemy here. And it's just a little bit of jumping of these rings. You don't want to hit them. Just got to flip all these switches. Ooh. Not to worry. And we've got a bounce pad. Go ahead and collect the rest of those bells. Head up here. And here is the animation when you collect the golden anchors. Fits perfectly when Mario collects stars, shines, or moons. And when Banjo-Kazooie collects jiggies. So let's continue out of here. Head across this bridge, collect some more bells. And don't forget to flip this switch. Now, the reason why you, you want to flip this switch is because if you leave this game and come back, sometimes it sends you back to this beginning world and it just makes it easier to get back up to the top to get to your boat. And speaking of the boat, this boat reminds me a lot of the Odyssey. And this is called the Voyager. It's Trip's Voyage and Super Mario Odyssey. You fly in the Odyssey. They're both flying machines that have giant balloons. Just a little similarity. I'm not saying that they're identical, but they are quite similar. Set sail, of course we're gonna set sail. And that is an amazing cutscene. I love the fact that there are cutscenes in here. And every time that you fully beat a level, you get this trophy over the island, which I think is just a nice touch, especially when more levels do get added and you're just flying along here, just seeing which levels you need to go back to, to 100%. This is the new level that I was talking about that was just added not too long ago. But we first need to go here because we need some golden anchors to progress. So we'll head here to get some more golden anchors and this animation is really good it's like the golden anchors are used as keys which i really like and right away we get some more banjo kazooie vibes so let's just go ahead and enter into the new island and this new island is tropic trove these hidden bells are kind of like the hidden coins in Mario Odyssey and in Super Mario 3D World Bowser's Fury. Boo! Yar har har! I mean, ahoy! Sorry, matey. I hope your timbers aren't shivered. Welcome to Tropic Trove! It's a cozy little place. Erm, um, besides those pesky grumbles. Ah, they're called the grumbles, not goombas. But I like how they both start with a G. Don't forget that you can jump on them to defeat them. Hey, thank you for the little hint there. You can also press the trackpad to view the menu from there. You can view your abilities and collectibles. They might come in handy. Well, thank you, Ghost, for letting me know to go here and check this out. This is amazing. Like, this is like a professional option screen. Another just Banjo-Kazooie, Mario-esque. When you're selecting these options, it makes a little tune which I love to see. This simply is amazing. Like this world design and the parkour elements that were chosen is just great. Oh, right away, we've got a collectible. We need to collect eight rubber duckies. No biggie. We'll find all eight of those. Let's look around, break some crates. Maybe there's something down there. There definitely is. There's another rubber ducky. And right up here, let's go and talk to this chest. And this chest reminds me of the chests found in Hammerhead Beach in Banjo-Kazooie. Let's see what he wants. Psst, buddy, over here. Name's Chester. What a, what a nice name, Chester. I like that. Nice to make your acquaintance. You see them shiny little shell trinkets beside me? Three of them got swept away from me the other day by this blasted breeze. 
They can be picked up with Square. Would you help a fella out and fetch him er, for me? I can't walk with these older um, boards. <laughs> now that is just some rare comedy at best. And a nod to Rare's design choice with throwing cartoon eyes on inanimate objects just to add a little bit more personality for them. Now I know where these shells are because I've played this game a few times now. I have a blast every time that I play it. So there's one, two is over here, there we go, there's two, and three is in a bit of a trickier spot, but also at the same time, not really. It's a little bit more hidden than the other two, but not by a lot. Oh, fell into the water there. Water is very dangerous. Here is where the last golden shell is. It's behind this waterfall. Inside of this clam shell. It's a bit confusing to get to that because the water is dangerous, but you can walk right through that waterfall. It kind of presents itself as something that you would. And there we go. Our first golden anchor. Thanks, a pal. You're welcome, Chester. Oh, I see another rubber ducky over here. Go ahead. Now I got four out of eight. This is Bounce Beach, one of my favorite areas. If you ground pound, you can actually get some extra height, which is a nice addition. Just collected some bells over there. We don't need to collect a lot of them, though. And right here, our first timed section. Now, this can be a little tricky. But what I find with these bounce pads is that you just need to trust them, walk forward, and you will make it. Ooh, sometimes you gotta do it a couple times. You know, that's how it is for these, for these time trials. And we got it, second try without a problem. You may have noticed these pegs in the ground, and this is very similar to areas in Mario Odyssey, but it's more reminding me of the springs that you find in Super Mario 3D World Bowser's Fury. Very, very similar. I'm not complaining at all with all these similarities. I think that it makes the game awesome that all of these Mario features get to be added and we get to experience them all in one place really. This is a secret code that you have to type in at Elemental Isle. A way that I remember it is kind of like RGB, you know, like RGB PC component or like an RGB keyboard and mouse, but it goes RG yellow B. So it's just like RGB, but with yellow before the B. That's the way that I remember it. So we're just gonna head over there and do that. And there is another hidden rubber duck. All right, now time to flip the switches. And remember, RGB, but yellow before B. So red. Now you're gonna want to walk over these, not press them. I'm going to show you what happens actually if you press them. You could accidentally, like if you jump, you could accidentally press them twice and then you have to restart all over. So the best strategy that I found is just to run right over them. Like so, just boom. Red, R. Green, G. Then before the B, yellow. Oh, and I hit that one twice, so... Unfortunately, you do have to do it all over again if you do hit it twice, but it's not that big of a deal. Let's see how many do we need. So we can check that in collectibles, and it looks like we need 12 anchors, and we've got three so far. Let's go ahead and check out this hole that's in the ground. Hey, a bub named Sylvester. Yeah, Sylvester the raccoon. I dug up this shiny anchor on the beach a while back. Truth is, I got too many on my paws these days. So here's a deal. You give me a hundred bells and it's all yours. How's that? 
Well, I've only got 91 bells right now, so no way. Okay, well, you're lost, pal. Now, Sylvester the Raccoon reminds me a lot of the squirrels that sell you shines in Super Mario Sunshine for blue coins. So let's collect a few more bells, and then we will be able to buy a golden anchor from Sylvester the Raccoon. 104, perfect. Let's go back to Sylvester and get that golden anchor. Yo, what's up, Sylvester? Take him. Sure thing, here you go. Awesome, another golden anchor. So we're up to five. Need seven more. We're on a roll. Let's see if I can't find any more of those rubber duckies. Look out for these, for these flames. But let's light all of these on fire. There's a few of them. Make sure that I got that one. And the last one is over here. And got another golden anchor. Only six more left to go. I really like that fire puzzle. It's very unique. And look at that, the fire has stopped spitting fireballs. Nice. Up here at Mountain Midpoint, we've got a bit of a battle section. Block us off. Can't escape until we beat all the enemies. Now let's just fling on over and pick up another golden anchor. Only five left to go. Oh, I see another one of the rubber duckies. I think I'm gonna have to go and get it. Six out of the eight. Only two more left. And I would like to add just how much detail is just everywhere. The little tufts of smoke that are from everywhere to when you bump into walls, there's even a little animation and sound effect being added. All these attentions to detail, I'm a huge fan of. Okay, gotta be careful with these clamshells. Oof. Oh, I hear something. Oh, there's a rubber ducky. Ooh, you know what? Maybe there's a checkpoint here. There's a checkpoint. Let's go to the checkpoint first. And get this golden anchor. I did also want to just point out that the higher up you get, the quieter the music becomes until all you can hear is the breeze. Kind of like how it is in Banjo-Kazooie, where the higher up you get, the quieter the music becomes until all you can hear is the breeze. But there's the rubber ducky, and there's the other rubber ducky. Seven, eight, there's all the rubber duckies, and the golden anchor is down there. Should probably go and get that. Now, as long as we don't get any checkpoints, we should just be able to hop into the water and make it right back up to the top. Golden anchor, nine of them, only three more left. From up here, there's another golden anchor. We just gotta fling on there. Line it up just perfectly and fling right there. 10 golden anchors, only two more left. And it looks like there's one more over there. So let's just hop back into the water. To make it back up to the top and just fling on over here to then fling on over here. Now this is an interesting parkour challenge. Now all you have to do is make it onto the platforms. You don't have to land on these pegs here which is very helpful because it would be almost impossible to land exactly on these spinning pegs and just fling on over here, just line it up perfectly. That's 11. Now, what about the last one? Well, why don't we head on over here? Collect some more of these bells and just kind of take a look and see if there's anything around. I see something over there. Looks like a TV. Let's see what this is about. Oh, I know where that's at. That's over by that flame. So you need to go up there over to the bridge and then drop down. And there's some sort of a secret area. I bet you that's where the last golden anchor is. So we'll just quickly head up here, head over here. And it's just across this bridge and you just drop down right here. Go we'll just ground pound. Okay. 
And sure enough, there it is. And the music in this area reminds me a lot of Banjo-Kazooie's Spiral Mountain. Vaguely. Not exactly to a T, but definitely has a little bit of inspiration from there, I think. And you gotta utilize all of the skills that you previously learned throughout the entire level to make it through here without a problem. Alright, now we've made it to the end. Ooh, this part looks a little tricky, but thankfully there are bounce pads, so we can just jump on over. Last thing, just wait for there to be an opening and fling on through and there is the final golden anchor world complete let's get on out of here and head back to the voyager now let's go ahead and head off to the next level Alrighty, next level. How many do we need? We only need eight, right? We got more than eight. In this level, we are introduced to the first boss as well. I believe his name is Sylvester. We've also got some new enemy types as well, and also a penguin. So let's enter in here. Glassy Glacier. What a nice name for an ice level. Let's go see our penguin friend, see what he wants. Hi there, I'm Meredith Penguin. You can call me Mare. Okay, Mare. There's been this big nasty monster who's been trying to gobble up us penguins recently. He's a real bully. He's nested right on top of that tower, just slithering under the snow. Shoo, I guess every mean beast needs a castle, huh? Maybe you could climb up there and pummel him. I mean, you look like the type. Do be careful, though. Well, thank you, Mare. I appreciate that. And I got your back. I can definitely take care of your snake problem. Head up here with a little bit of a gust. Now, I won't be 100%ing this entire level just because I want this video to not be two hours long. Uh, the estimated playtime for this game is about one to two hours, but I do want to at least make it through this level and get up to the boss and beat the boss. And then I will be giving you guys my final thoughts. And right away, this is kind of like when you possess the spark pylon in Mario Odyssey. I just need to, I need to do that one more time. I need to appreciate this animation. It's just so cool. Look at that. Look at all the detail, like the swing when he makes it to the end. Super cool. And the sound effects, also really great. We got some more bells over here, some snowballs. Oh, looks like we're having a little snowball fight, eh? I'm going to get you. Watch out. Boom. Gotcha. Let's see. What, what's the name of this area? Head of the Rink. I love these names. Another area with the star. Oh, some more of these guys. Take care of business. Hold L1 and L2 to run on ice skates. Let's head down to this ice real quick. And this spin while on the ice reminds me a lot of Super Mario 3D World Bowser's Fury. When you jump on the ice in there. Very satisfying to spin around and skate on the ice. There is rubber duckies here to collect as well. I know of where one is. And it's right here. Oh, it's very slick, so. You're gonna want to skate around on the ice as much as you possibly can because it's super slippery. We also got Sylvester here. Sylvester's burrow. Can't blame you for jumping in here. It's real nippy out there, it is. 
say while you stop by, I've got another anchor I could do without. I had to wall up some snorgs for it, but realized I'm full of inventory. Bummer. I had to put up a fight for this, so how about 150 for the anchor deal? No way, no way. I don't got 150 bells. But if I did, I definitely would take you up on that offer. Oh, we've got a little bit of a forest over here. The wooded peak. But that's not what we're focused on. We're focused on beating that snake. In the frosty fortress. Oh, right there. This is kind of also like in Bowser's Fury. When Bowser is the only creature that can break these enemy blocks. Let's go ahead and take care of business. Take that guy down. He's helped us out and make it up here. There are some balloon sections all over this place. When collecting a balloon, it gives you a bit of a floating ability where you can jump extra high. Again, we're not really going to be focusing on those. I may actually go and grab that balloon though. Just so I can make it over this segment a little bit easier. Oh, nice save. Made it over this lightning. Ooh, just about made it there without getting hit. But there is a health apple right there. Nice. Oh, make it real fast. Oh, jeez. That was a bit unfortunate. Get the... Oh, it's Sebastian, not Sylvester. It was Sebastian's tower. My apologies, guys, for calling him Sylvester. That's the raccoon. But let's go defeat Sebastian the snake. Got a bit of a cutscene here. And there he is. This definitely has the aesthetics of a rare boss, like in Banjo-Kazooie or something like that, or a rare game, and I love it. Maybe even a bit of a Mario-esque type of an enemy. So let's go ahead and check out what he's got to say. What's this little orange flea doing slinking onto my tower? Ah, I'll bet you're after my shiny little anchor. That's too bad, rodent. Lucky for me, though, I was just thinking my tummy's getting quite rumbly-tumbly. Those feathery, flappy penguins just weren't doing it for me. Let's see how tenderized feline fares. Alrighty, so a bit of a strat, a bit of a strategy here is to just roll around in a circle. Make sure to save those life apples because they will come in handy and move out of the way. Make sure to take out these snowmen whenever you get the chance to. Avoid the icicles, jump on the bounce pad, and whack them in the eyes. Then just start rolling right away, because if you stop, then you're gonna get caught. And now there's these waves that you want to avoid, while also avoiding these snowmen. It can get kind of tricky. Again, you're going to want to get rid of as many as you can right away. Avoid all the icicles. Now, no longer a bounce pad. Whack him in the eyes. Go ahead and now collect that health apple. Collect them whenever you have two, two lives. They do respawn, but it takes a little bit of time. Then you want to make sure that you're on the outside of the edge here. Then try and get rid of as many snowmen as you can while the icicles are falling down. And right here, this is where things can get a little bit tricky, but you don't need to actually hop on the third platform. They're really slippery and it's almost impossible to. So you can actually just go onto the second platform and hop from there like I just did. That is the winning strategy right there. And another great little cutscene. Oh, Mur. Wow, he really did it. I knew he'd be able to. That slithery coward wasn't standing a chance. 
Now let's collect our golden anchor. Head back down here, I suppose. Go talk to Mur. Alrighty, now that we've made it back over to Mur, let's go and see what our reward is. Wow, that was crazy. I saw that whole showdown from all the way over here. You really showed him. I know I just met you, but I'm really glad that I did. If we don't cross paths again, just know I'm really grateful. You're pretty swell. Farewell, furry friend. Here, take some bells as thanks. I'm sure you need them more than me. And I just about have enough to buy from Sylvester again. But as much as I would love to continue getting all of the anchors in this world, there is 13 of them to collect. I just don't want this video to be super long because I feel like it's already long enough. But hey, if you guys want me to make another video completing the entire rest of this game, let me know in the comments down below. Let's move on to my final thoughts and my theory of what the next level is. The theory of what the next level could be I noticed that you could fly up and down and while doing that I noticed how high you could really fly up and look what's up here there is a moon and with how many references there are to super mario odyssey i wouldn't be surprised that there will be a moon level in the near future now this is just a theory that i have and i could be completely wrong but in mario odyssey there is a moon level so i could be pretty close or i could be really far off but why would you be able to fly up this high and why would there be a moon here if there wasn't going to be a moon level in the future let me get to the final thoughts of Trip's Voyage. Trip's Voyage by Euphalas in actual Jimmy Jam with music provided by Vince Cully and Ghost Fruit 64 is the perfect game for Mario and Banjo-Kazooie fans to satisfy their craving with a fun and colorful new platformer to try out. The game takes the best features from all the 3D Mario games in Banjo-Kazooie and I absolutely love that. It feels like a Mario game but does not feel like a Mario clone. It still feels like an original collect-a-thon platformer with the snappy controls of a Mario game, which I thought could never happen in Dreams because of how the character puppets work. So I'm super impressed that this was able to happen in Dreams. The music is very relaxing and sets the mood for each world perfectly and does not get annoying to listen to. The animations and the world designs are stunning. The game can be challenging at times, but just the right amount to not make you frustrated and give up, but to keep on trying again until you get it right. The boss fight is very satisfying when you win because of the initial first challenge. I had to play it at least six times until I beat it, and it felt amazing to win. It is also really nice that it followed the boss formula like a Mario game because I knew how many times I was going to have to hit the boss until I won. The developer of this project definitely has a lot of talent and a bright future ahead of them in the gaming industry. If you want to keep up to date with this project, be sure to follow Trips Voyage on Instagram. With that all being said, I hope you enjoyed. Have a fantastic rest of your day, night, or whenever it is that you're watching. And remember to keep on dreaming. Thank you.